The Drug Alternative Program presents Drugs Close to Home. Your weekly insight into the ongoing stories of struggle, victory, and the spiritual renewal of rehabilitation. Each week, Cliff and Freddie Harris, co-founders of the Drug Alternative Program, would like to introduce you to the many people who have touched their lives through their spirit-filled ministry. But most of all, they would like to share with you the blessings they continue to receive from Jesus Christ. And now, your hosts of Drugs Close to Home, Cliff and Freddie Harris. Welcome to Drugs Close to Home, a program about the destruction that drugs causes our family. And the power of Jesus Christ to heal them. We believe every life is worth saving. And Freddie, that is so true because every changed life is a miracle from God. Amen. You know, honey, I was just thinking about our double celebration. We had a double okay. celebration, my 50th birthday and our 10th wedding anniversary. Uh -huh. And I know we were getting ready for the party, and, and the title was The Miracle of One Red Rose. You know, One Red Rose is very significant in our program and in our marriage. So when I was getting things ready, I found this book, and I looked in the book, mm -hmm. and I remember before I even met Cliff, I made a list of 13 characteristics that I wanted in my husband. And I had lost that, but hadn't even thought about it and I looked at that list you guys and everything I asked the Lord for in a husband I found in Clifford Oliver Harris including pretty feet <laughs> all right <laughs> so the God so the Lord gave me the desires of my heart and honey you have really made me happy all of these Praise 31 the years oh thank you give me little kids <laughs> all right on the cheek you know we like to cheek you know she always talks about you know a lot of people like to kiss on the lips i like to just kiss, kiss her on, on my the cheeks cheek. yes that's my that's my specialty you know today we have a a new guest with us who just arrived at drug alternative program you know dap is a program that's 12 to 18 months that's quite a long time you know our program's started off short program, but now we're to 12 to 18 months and we've seen much better success rate. In fact, our success rate is 60 to 80 percent. The traditional su success rate is like 16 to 20 percent. So we are proud to have Praise Nicholas Muck with us. Welcome, Nicholas. I guess. You just came in the door almost. Yes, yes, starting <laughs> my third week today. Right. Third week. Yes. Now, one thing, Freddie, I, I want to let the audience know when he came uh, he had stuff in his ear and what else? And necklaces and stuff. Beard and, and a ponytail. And everything. <laughs> yes. And he was even, you could tell from, what's your drug of choice? Alcohol. 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 And yeah. anything else I could get my hands on, <laughs> okay. pretty much. But from the alcohol, you... you were telling me that you drank every day. You from had sun to up to sundown. Mm. And even in the middle of the night when I'd wake up and couldn't sleep. So tell us about yourself. Where are you from? And uh, I'm from Big Bear Lake, California. Um, I'm 28 years old. I was born and raised there up until I was about 17, and then I moved down to Redlands. Uh, I was too much for my mother, and she sent me down to live with my aunt and uncle. Uh, from there, I joined a, a rock band, and it became all about sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Mm. And that's when I started, uh, started using meth. I did that for about five or six years. Um, I cut that out the day my son was born. I watched him be born while I was spun out. Um, mm. And then from there, I just traded one for another. Uh, I got rid of meth. Then I started doing cocaine when I moved to New Mexico. was stealing from work to support my habit. Um, she left New Mexico, came back out here, came back out here, tried to make it work. It wouldn't work. Uh, we, we just, we had enough of each other, the, the cheating, the lying and stuff. And then... Um, this is just a girlfriend. Yeah, my my ex my ex fiance um, from for, with my first kid. I've actually had two two relationships with uh, two different kids. So how old are your children? Uh, three and nine. Three and nine. Three and nine. And how did you find out about DAP? 
Uh, it was a family friend of my most recent ex's family. Uh, his name's Lonnie Shattuck, mm -hmm. and he referred for, referred the program to them to, to refer to me. So Lonnie Shattuck is a graduate mm -hmm. of the program, so yes. he's been around for 10 right. to 15 years. Yes. <laughs> I, I, that's been a long time. I right. think Lonnie, because he just lost his mother not too long ago. But anyway, I want to ask you this. I want to let the audience know, when he came in, I mean, he, he had the shakes. Had the shakes. And tell me the feeling. See, I wanted you here because this is the beginning of your program. Yes. You know, there's a lot I don't know about you yet. Uh, are you going to be for real? Are you going to complete the program? Are you going to make those changes in your life? That's important because um, I want the audience to know what are you going to do differently this time? Have you been in programs before? Never. Never? Oh, Not this once. is your first time, first time being in a program? Yes. Okay, I always so. put it off. Um, I've been asked to. I've showed up, interviewed, and then left. Never gave it a shot. Uh, it was a couple times now that I went and then just left. So what was tried. different about this program? Uh, the main thing for me was getting reconnected with God. Mm -hmm. uh, I was born and raised uh, Baptist up in Big Bear. And I was always going to church as a child. My grandfather was very big on religion. Um, but when I became a teenager and started smoking pot, I just lost my way. I said, to heck with it. And I had no time in my life for religion. I wanted to, to party, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I thought going out and being a cool guy was more important than, than God. Mm -hmm. so. so what did you do? coming here uh, what's the difference this time why did you choose this time to not walk away or take the interview and not because we've interviewed a lot of guys who come and we just interviewed a guy what was it, about a week ago mm -hmm. and his mother was with him uh, we talked with him and it was a couple of clients that were in there and after all of that of uh, 20 to 30 minutes no, I don't want this. Mm -hmm. And he walked away. No. I, I think for me what it was is over the past few months, I've just realized how bad of a father I was, how I'm not doing anything in my life to progress or to show them how to be when they're grown. I was showing them the completely wrong way. And I, I vowed to myself when I was younger, if I ever had children, I would not be like my father who was not present in my life, in and out of jail, doing drugs, uh, abusing my mother. Uh, one time mm. he actually set our house ablaze, mm. and we were homeless for about a good six months, my mother and my two brothers. Wow. Uh, yeah, so I vowed that Who I wouldn't be... Who is your be... father now? He lives in Nevada. He spent uh, 10 years in prison for statutory rape. Mm. So is he still on drugs? No, no, he's clean. Uh, he has God in his life now, but he's a registered sex offender in Nevada, and he can't leave because he's on parole. Mm. Mm. Do you want that stigma on you for no. the rest of your life? No. That's something he has to deal with for the rest of his life. Yes, and that, and that was the main factor in me coming here. That I, what I vowed to do with my children, I was doing the same exact thing to them as what well, he did Tell us to me. something that you've done to your child that, you know, bothers you today. Okay, um, there is one instance where I was over at my in-law's house and I had left my beer at our house because I was going to come back and drink it. I, I wasn't allowed to drink over there because they knew I was an alcoholic. And um, basically what had happened was when we came home, my son knew that I had a drinking problem. He took my beer and he poured it down the drain and threw it in the trash. How old was he? Uh, six. And he knew you had a drinking problem? Yes. Yeah. He, he saw it all the time. Wait, uh, wait, wait just a minute. <laughs> my son was like... 17, something like that, when I did my drugs and he was hiding it from his mother. Mm -hmm. um, six is really young. Yeah, he was six. going on seven, but yeah, yeah it's, that's, it's that's, the same, yeah. But he but you, knew... Your pattern, you yes. know. Yeah, he yeah. knew that this drink was not good for you. He, he saw knew it constantly all attached to my lips, yes. So what did you do to, you know, to make your son, at, a child at seven years old, to realize that this was detrimental to my father, this was hurting my father. I, how did it, well, how do you think that came about? 
I believe it was at first, it was all the arguments that his, his mother and I were having, um, scream fests. Um, she would get violent with me because I pushed her to that point. I would say nasty things. Um, another thing would be every morning I would wake up hurling and everyone would hear that and he'd come in and say, dad, what's wrong? Dad, what's wrong? And I'd say, get out of here, leave me alone. You know, and I'd con finish puking and then I'd go have my drink. And he saw me breakfast time, you know, we'd wake up, all the kids are having breakfast, mom's sitting at the table, dad's in the room drinking. Mm -hmm. Had a 40 stuck to my lips. So he right. poured it out. So what happened? So what happened was I, I came inside and I was like, Tristan, what happened to my, my cup? He goes, Dad, I thought you were done with it. And I said, no, it was full. I said, you knew that I was wanting to drink that. I said, why did you do that? And he froze on me. So what I did was I grabbed him by his shoulder and I pushed him to the ground. Uh, I was yelling at him, telling him that he shouldn't have done that. That was my stuff. And, um, and uh, I had... The the main part of this that devastated me the most is I went to go stomp on him, and uh, my ex came in, and uh, she's like, "Don't you dare!" She's like, "Look at you right now." She said, "What are you?" And at that moment, like I had to take a step back, and I just I bawled to myself. I went in the room and I cried. I I couldn't I could not live with myself for that because I almost harmed my child, and I watched my father beat me, beat my brothers and my mom, and I almost became that person, mm. and. Uh, yeah, that was probably the most detrimental thing to me. And, uh, and you know what? After that happened, I still kept drinking. I got depressed about it, so I started popping pills while I was drinking. And it just got worse. Mm. Wow. Continue. Uh, I want you to continue talking uh, about that. Um, amongst that, uh, name-calling to my children. Um, my, my son would do something wrong. And uh, yeah, i say, how could you be so stupid? What are you doing? You're failing. What are you doing, you know, and just constant jabs at him, you know, and uh, I always thought I was pretty loving, you know, if he ever wanted a hug, I told him I loved him constantly, kissed him and stuff, but I feel like those things that I did negated any so sort of love that I was showing him, mm. you know, because my addiction was taking over. I stole out of their piggy banks, you know, he, one time we went to the store and he's, he's like, dad, I want to go get something. I, you know, I've got at least $20 in my piggy bank. And I was like, oh, no, son, no, we can't do that right now. We'll do it another time. Just trying to cover up myself that I robbed my son of, of mm. his money that he earned, you know, doing chores around the house or just generally being a good boy. Mm. You know, um, there's been times where I wouldn't have alcohol and I'd be fiending for it. And they, my sons would be doing typical things, you know, jumping around, playing with each other, being a little loud, things kids do. And uh, I would scream and yell at them, you know, stop it. Why are you doing this? You know, mm. you're irritating me. Calm down, stop. Normal things that children do. And, and that, that was my mindset. You know, I had become my father. Hold that just a minute. We'll be right back. Don't change that channel. We'll be right back. What brought me here this time is the shame and guilt that I felt from all the years of, of using drugs and I abandoned my family and my wife and my kids and my grandkids and three good jobs and I was walking the streets of Seattle one night and I realized I was without hope and my parents encouraged me to make that call and it took a while but I finally made that call and I knew what I was getting to coming to DAP but once I got here I felt the love and discipline that I needed. I, I walked away from God about 20 years now. And coming back to DAP, I, I feel the peace and, and I'm casting my cares on the Lord because this is the way the program is structured. It's a spiritual based program and that's what I love about it because when I got here, as I said, I didn't know what to expect. And what, 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 what I do in, in my daily routine, even throughout the week, on Tuesdays we do a group, which is very structured, you know, and I get to participate, open up, about my life, you know, telling me about what I did, you know, even if it was wrong, I just had to lay it out there. And then on Wednesdays we do Bible study, which is, you know, it opens up my mind to get back in the biblical sense of things. As soon as I came to DAP, God was introducing my life again. I've been going to worship every day. Uh, we go to church every Saturday. And uh, I've learned new things from the people that I live with, you know how they do things, how they pray. And uh, before we go to work, we all gathered around and pray. Before we go to sleep, that was not my habit before. I've never, I've never think about God at all when I was out there. It's not a facility, it's a home. 
We live in a neighborhood with, you know, regular people that go about their regular routines. And the amenities we have are second to none. We're comfortable. We have the time to concentrate and focus on why it is that we are in this position in our lives today. What I look forward to the most is most definitely always going to be seeing lives change because that's the reason I'm here, you know, and uh, that's the reason I, I want to stay here and do what I do because it, I get joy, enjoyment out of it when I see people's lives are changed, you know, because that's what it's all about. As, as Ms. Harris always say, you know, God brought us, got us together to do service, to do his work. We are his hands, we are his eyes, we are his mouth. So, and, and I get enjoyment, enjoyment out of that, is to give back, to see someone else's life change just like mine was. Welcome back. We're talking to Nick Muck, who is our very newest client. Nick has only been here three weeks, and this is your very first program. Yes. You know, we have very few guys that come here for a first program. So... That's a little different, I, I honey. Wanna, I want to let the audience know, we don't do programs or have them do TV interviews, but I wanted to, I was just impressed to do this one with you. Um, this is your first program? Yes. I'm talking about treatment center. Yes, first ever. First ever. Mm -hmm. There are guys who've been through five, 10, 20 programs. Now, this is your first. Yes. Now, what makes you think that you are going to be for real in this program, this first one, that you've never been in a treatment before? You know, in other words, somebody might come to me, especially from church, and say, what happened to Nick? How's Nick doing? Where is he at? Oh, Nick is back out there again. Is that what you're going to go through? Is that what's going to happen with you? That's not what I truly want in my heart. Yeah, we know that's not what you want. Right. We know you don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. Now, you have also made a commitment of um, you want to be baptized yes, this sir. coming Sabbath. Yes. Why? Well, Why I... do you want to be being baptized? What's your reason? What's your motive behind it? Let's. Lay it out there for real to me. Okay. Um, well, like I said, I always grew up religious, you know, and I lost my way. Well, about a year and a half ago, two years ago, um, I had been attending church regularly, um, and I had been praying about it, and I had the feeling in me, I believe it was God telling me that I needed to get baptized so I could start my life over. At that time, I was trying to get clean on my own, but it really wasn't working. I figured if I would get baptized, that that would help kickstart me. Well, I ended up off on my addiction, and I never ended up getting baptized. Coming to DAP here, uh, knowing that it, it was going to be bridging my connection back with God, I wanted to come here and get baptized and start DAP right by being born again and being baptized in His name and, and connecting with Him from the start. I didn't want to go a few months and, and try to find some reason for me to leave. I wanted to come in here full force with God by my side. Okay, and you said down the line you find some way that you wanted to leave. Yes. Okay, what about this program you do not like? When I first got here and things that I'm noticing, the fact that I'm not allowed to do what I want. <laughs> um, I, I, I can't watch TV when I'd like, I can't go out, I can't take a walk, I can't make a phone call, I can't connect with anybody at this point of me being here that's really weighing on me because I'm used to being able to do anything that I'd like. Um, Our policy is the first three to four months, there's no letter writing, there's no contact with your family, there's no visitation. Yes. And the reason we do that is because we want you to get acclimated into the program. This program is about Nick and Nick changing his life. You know, not about children, not about mom, because we can put those to the side right now because you're not gonna be a good father you're not going to learn to be a good husband until you get Nick together. Yes. So those are the reasons. And I know a lot of the guys don't like that, but we want you to get to know Nick first and to change Nick. Yeah. So give me something else you don't like. That is just one. <laughs> There's other things in here that you don't like. There is, uh, but I'm getting used to. Uh, I really was not a fan of the food. 
coming in here. Um, I've never a vegetarian been, diet. Never been on a vegetarian <laughs> diet. You know, I always ate hot wings and cheeseburgers and <laughs> a lot of stuff that was just very bad for my body. Um, mm -hmm. I have bad acid reflux, and I would usually eat foods that would trigger that, which would cause me physical ailments. But so, do you get enough food? Yes, I do. So are you feeling better eating healthier food? Yes. Oh, I, f I feel so much better here. <laughs> yes. But you still don't like it. You still want the hamburger, and you still want the... Yes. But we take you guys to Hometown Buffet at that time, and yes. you can, you know, we have, we're vegetarians here, but we'll let you eat clean meats when you go mm -hmm. to Hometown Buffet. So we went there yesterday. Did you enjoy that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Did you, did you fill up on a lot of meat? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, okay, we asked you what you didn't like. What do you like about this program? Even though you can't compare it with any other because right. you haven't been in any other program. Yes. So what about the program that you think is helping you or you really like about the program? First and foremost, rebuilding my relationship with God. Um, that is something that I have not been able to do on my own because of my own selfish ways. Um, I believe that that would be my very first. Uh, secondly, the brotherhood here. Every, when I first arrived, everyone welcomed me with open arms. I, I heard I love you more than I could count <laughs> How since, I've been, since I've been here, even with having kids and in a, in a relationship. Uh, the guys here actually do care about you. They're there for you, and it, it's a sense of brotherhood. How do you feel about all these hugs you get every morning? You know, these guys have to hug every morning, and it's like some guys come to the program, ugh. Oh. So yeah. how did you feel about all these hugs? You know what? At first I wasn't used to it. I was like, why are these guys hugging me? They don't even know me. <laughs> but uh, I come to find out that, you know, they do it out of love. And even though they don't know me very well yet, they have love in their heart for me because that's what God wants from all of us is to show love and compassion. And that's what you could need to do for the person that's coming behind you yes. to do the same thing. And, you know, that helps you that in the time's going to come when you want to hug your son mm -hmm. and hug him in the right manner. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, three weeks into the program. Yes. So were you a person who liked to get up early in the morning? How does, how does that affect you? Well, quite honestly, I am a morning person. Um, I usually wake up around five. I don't know if that was the liquor waking me up, telling me, <laughs> Hey, get some in you, you know, or, or my body just saying, Hey, um, but before I came here, I was a painter, residential, and uh, business. So we were usually up at 5 in the morning, at work at 6, and then done by 2. Um, so the waking up part didn't, didn't really weigh on me. Um, the fact that I had a bedtime did. Um, that kind of bothered me because sometimes I can't fall asleep. So laying in bed gives me a lot of time to think about things that I've done wrong. But you know what? I, I really think that it's doing me some good being able to weigh those things in my head at night before I fall asleep. But what about the positive? The positive? When you're laying there and you're thinking of the negative of all the things you have done, but turn that around and look what God is doing for you now. Yes. He, in a positive manner. He's, he's put me on track to become a better person. Um, you know, while I do think of those things that are negative, I also sit there and pray and I ask him to help me through it. And nine times out of 10, after I get done with my prayer, I lay there for a few minutes, and I'm, before I know it, I'm up at four, you know, and it's a new day, and I'm thankful to be alive and awake. You also have to cook in this program. Have you had any experience in cooking? Yeah, actually, I, I, I fancy myself a cook. Oh, good. I, I actually good. cook very well. I've never cooked vegetarian dishes, <laughs> um, but yeah, the cooking thing is actually something I'm kind of excited about, because. I'm very prideful when it comes to my cooking. I like seeing people's faces when they enjoy something that I've made. Good. It makes me feel good about myself because before my addiction and my selfishness, I was always a giver. Whenever I had something, I'd always, you know, hey, you want some? Do you want some? You know, I'd, I'd buy five brand new shirts. My brother would walk in, hey, I just got this. It would look really good on you. Take it. <laughs> you know, so right. before my addiction, I, I was a giver and, and uh, I, I like pleasing people, you know, and, and that's something that I lost. And you know what? I pray and ask the Lord that I want the character of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And Jesus was always a giver and he was a hugger, mm -hmm. you know. Not very many people know yes. that Jesus was a toucher, you yeah. know. <laughs> he touched people and that's what we want to do here. We touch each other, we encourage each other, we love one another. And so in all of this process that you're going through, um, 
you look totally different from when you walked in this door. Right. I'm, I'm serious. When I, you know, you didn't even look the same person. I mean, he had shakes and he was, you know, going on and. And it's only been three yes. weeks. Yeah. <laughs> And well, I, I, do you feel better? Yeah, uh, by the grace of God, I believe that with my brothers and you guys, this new family that I have, I got through my, my uh, withdrawal symptoms very, very fast. It only took five days, and then I was up and ready to work. So You know, people ask, do you do detox? Or we don't do detox. What is a detox? I said, our detox is they drink a whole lot of water. They might let them rest a day or two, and then they go to work. That's our detox. <laughs> and that's what scared me at first because I was afraid. I was, I was afraid that I, my body wouldn't be able to take it and I needed to go put that in me so I wouldn't hurt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, I know that, um, what's the, the, the name of the people that? The Swansons. Yeah, Swansons? Adam and Maria. Right. Yeah. And you know, they call, how is Nick doing? How, <laughs> you know, that's letting you know, well, let him know that we called they want to know, let you know that they love and care about you, right. man. You know, that's, that's a blessing within itself mm -hmm. that someone out there really cares about me because I know you have disappointed them. I bet you yes. have treated them bad yes. and done things to them mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. But now they still love you. Yes. In fact, I think I'll call them and invite them to come to your baptism. Okay. They'll be excited about that. That would be amazing. <laughs> okay. I want you to look in that camera over there. You know, and there's there's a lot of guys out there like you, you know, with, you know, drugs and earrings and all this paraphernalia. What can you tell that person out there? Look at that camera and tell them. Your physical appearance is not that important. Um, being true to yourself and your family is. Uh, basically, don't, don't look for the facade. Uh, if you have a problem, if you need help, you need to seek it because putting it off and not taking care of it, it's only going to get worse. I'm proof of that. Uh, it took me burning every bridge that I had and basically having nowhere to go or trying to manipulate my way into another situation to find somewhere to go for me to realize that I all along needed to be a different person. Amen. Amen. Well, Nick, you've only been here for three weeks, so you have... 17, at least 17 months to go. Mm -hmm. So we welcome you here. It's not about time, how many months. <laughs> it's about just let it flow. Yes. Just right. Go through it. Right. Okay, telephone. Don't forget the telephone. And you know what? Um, we need some funds to help us with Nick because Nick didn't have any money. We didn't turn him away because he has no money. It's not about money. It's about helping him to change his life. So give us a call. We'd love to hear from you. And remember, we love you. And Jesus loves you even more. And we will see you next time.